uh, we've been working from 2009 uh, till now. Um, the past three years, we've been doing uh, nearly 1,000 surgical operations. Um, and uh, nearly 60% of that are congenital, 40% uh, are adults. Uh, also, there are uh, uh, more than 3,000 uh, uh, cath lab uh, percutaneous interventions. Um, we have um, a big interest in neonatal interventions uh, uh, and uh, for, for cath and cardiac surgery. Uh, we've been doing uh, more than nearly 100 uh, arterial switch operation every year. So, um, so we're happy to be with the, uh, with you uh, here. Um, all of these uh, operations are being done uh, free of charge. Uh, uh, this is a charity project, so uh, all of patients are treated uh, for free. Uh, we're happy to share with you some challenging uh, cases today. Um, not classic. Uh, uh, it's good to share our uh, what we've learned from that, and it would be great if you can uh, comment what would you have done different or uh, what what else uh, you, you would teach us. Um, go ahead, Gabriel. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hatim. We start now. Uh, case number one: a four-month-old <coughs> infant diagnosed. Diagnosed as truncus arteriosus type 2. Uh, and this, uh, these are uh, the post processed images of uh, the truncus, as you see here. This is a, uh, a volumetric image, uh, demonstrates the common trunk, this one, okay, single trunk, supplying the pulmonary arteries, right pulmonary artery, RPA and LPA, and the aortic arch. And in another view, this one, coronal oblique, displaying uh, the uh, aortic arch here, this one, and this one, the origin of LPA and RPA, no main pulmonary artery identified, so it is truncus arteriosus type 2, as you see here, okay. But reviewing the anatomy, uh, we found this unusual vascular structure, this one, okay. This, the unusual uh, uh, structure, vascular structure from the common carotid stem, as you see here. We trace it downwards till its end, and we found it ends here and supplying the uh, coronary arteries. And no, no direct supply of the coronary arteries from the trunk root. As you see here, this a VRT or a 3D image displaying the uh, aortic arch and the arch branches. This is the common carotid origin or, or common carotid stem, uh, giving a, or supplying the right common carotid and left common carotid, then the left subclavian artery, and lastly, the aberrant right subclavian artery. And this is the vascular structure, which is the abnormal or unusual finding, the common coronary trunk, this one, as you see here, common coronary trunk arise, arises from the distal uh, segment of the common carotid uh, uh, stem, like this, and ends here supplying the left main artery, LED, LCX, and RCA, as you see here, and this reconstructed image, as you see here, this one, the common coronary trunk, supplying the coronary arteries and no coronary arterial supply from the trunk root. This is the only supply of the coronary arteries. This one, this image, a curved MPR, a curved multiplanar reformatted image, showing the truncus arteriosus, this one, supplying the left pulmonary artery, and the right pulmonary artery, not displayed here, not displayed here, and this is the aortic arch. The first branch is the common carotid stem, supplying both carotid arteries, the second one, left subclavian artery, and this is the common coronary trunk rises from the common carotid stem and ends here by supplying the LAD, RCA, and L6. And this thin CT, as you see here, as you see here, this is the uh, truncus or common trunk, and this one, the LPA, left pulmonary artery, and this, uh, the common carotid trunk supplying the long uh, common carotid, common uh, coronary trunk that in turn gives the coronary, the whole coronary supply uh, of uh, this patient or this child. Uh, what was uh, the management, Dr. Hatton, in this case? So, so that case um, um, had the repair of the truncus arteriosus. Obviously, finding the the abnormal coronary course, which which was the only uh, coronary supply for the for the heart uh, coming high up from the carotid, was a, a really unusual finding. Uh, so, um, uh, a 
at first we we made sure that we do not injure this uh, this coronary, but also we have uh, re-implanted uh, the coronary artery into the new root after repairing the truncus. Um, uh, the challenge here was also thinking about uh, how to stop the heart and give cardioplegia because with the usual manner when we cross clamp the aorta and then infuse uh, cardioplegia into the root, this would not be supplying coronaries. So we had to transect the, the uh, coronary artery high up near the carotid and then in, put a selective cannula inside the coronary, uh, uh, infuse cardioplegia in that. Then um, we were, um, went ahead to uh, repair the truncus, which is um, closed the VSD by a patch and um, reconnected the pulmonary arteries onto the RV and then re-implanted this coronary into the new root. Uh, these are post-operative images that, that show the re-implanted coronary where, where Gabriel uh, can show it beautifully here. Yes. Uh, as Dr. Hatem mentioned, uh, no osteostenosis of the uh, implanted, re-implanted coronary uh, arteries, as you see here, uh, no osteostenosis and the patient is going well. Okay. Uh, lesson learned here from this case, uh, coronary artery anomalies are not rare in truncus arteriosus, uh, and the assessment of coronary arteries includes the origin, the course, and termination. CT has a superior role, a superior role in coronary artery assessment. Okay. Uh, let's move to case two. Six months old infant presented with cyanosis, diagnosed as double inlet left ventricle, severe PS, and hypoplastic pulmonary arteries. As you see, this is an axial image, uh, post contrast CT, uh, showing the right atrium, this one, and this one, the left atrium. Both, uh, both, AV, uh, uh, both atria are connected to the single or the dominant left ventricle, this chamber. So we are dealing with double inlet left ventricle, and uh, the, uh, this uh, dominant ventricle supplies the uh, aorta and no subaortic stenosis or, or uh, no obstruction. Uh, and there is a, uh, as you see here, a, this rudimentary chamber, this one, rudimentary chamber, outlet chamber, supplies the pulmonary artery, this chamber, okay, and this one. Uh, and reviewing this anatomy, okay, this case, we we found that unusual vein, this venous structure in the left side, drain seen draining into the left brachiocephalic vein. So we first assume this venous structure is a persistent left superior vena cava. Okay, but uh, while tracing this venous structure, okay, this one, as you see here, we found that uh, it drains uh, the uh, coronary veins. As you see here, these are the coronary veins seen draining into this vertical vein. Okay, as you see here, these are uh, the coronary veins draining into this vertical vein. Uh, a more, um, this a, a volume rendered image, the image showing this left-sided vertical vein. This, uh, this vein receives the coronary venous drainage. Okay, as you see here, uh, another view like this. And this to the sagittal oblique, sagittal plane, uh, displaying the uh, coronary veins, as you see here, and the vertical vein seen draining are obstructed into the left brachiocephalic vein. Okay, and this is the dominant left ventricle, and this one, the uh, rudimentary outlet chamber of RV morphology, supplying the main pulmonary artery and connected to the dominant left ventricle by a bulbo ventricular foramen. Okay. Um, uh, 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 so that this unusual finding, uh, we should uh, uh, note this uh, important uh, finding, so that uh, the surgeon will not ligate or uh, transect this vein, as this vein represents the only or the main the main venous drainage of the heart okay and uh, in this case the coronary sinus was atretic uh, and i will uh, here in this uh, slide show the normal uh, this slide displays uh, and this is the axial post contrast ct displays or shows the normal patent coronary venous sinus this structure receiving the middle cardiac vein and greater cardiac vein and this chamber is the right ventricle, and this one left ventricle, and this chamber is the right atrium. 
Normally, the coronary venous sinus drains into the right atrium. And this, uh, and this level, this is the sinus ostium patent. And this one is Thebesian valve. As you see, this, this uh, faint uh, membrane or valve, this one called Thebesian valve. And this normally, the coronary venous sinus drains into the uh, uh, right atrium. But in cases of atritic coronary venous sinus, atritic coronary venous sinus ostium, okay? You will, you will not see any connection between this coronary venous sinus, okay, and the right atrium. There is no connection between this uh, coronary sinus and right atrium. And so we are dealing with uh, coronary sinus ostium atresia, okay? Similar cases like this, this one, uh, sagittal or coronal oblique, coronal oblique, this one, displays uh, the, uh, the left atrium, this structure, and this chamber, the right atrium, okay? And here uh, we uh, cut end on uh, on the uh, coronary venous sinus uh, near its ostium, so that uh, this represents uh, atritic coronary sinus ostium. No connection, no communication between the coronary venous sinus and right atrium. Okay. Also on this image, sagittal in sagittal plane, sagittal oblique. As you see, this is uh, the electrodes, and this one the vertebral column. This is the aorta. Uh, this this chamber is uh, the left atrium, as you see here. And uh, in this case, uh, if you get closer to the image, you will see a thin membrane like this, and no connection between the uh, coronary coronary venous sinus and right atrium. And uh, also in this case, atrial coronary venous sinus ostium, and the coronary veins. The main drainage of the coronary veins is through this vertical vein. Okay. Uh, another case uh, displays also the. Uh, as you see here, the, uh, this is the aorta. This image, uh, the arterial vellum numbered image. This is the aorta, this is the pulmonary artery. Uh, we are dealing with dwarf. This is the right ventricular ventricle. And this is the LED. This structure is the greater cardiac vein, okay, as you see here. Uh, the greater cardiac vein along with its tributaries. This, uh, this view from the lateral side. This is left atrium, left ventricle, right atrium, right ventricle. And these are, are the uh, tributaries of the greater cardiac vein, as you see here, uh, seen draining into this left-sided vertical vein, which in turn drains into left cephalic vein, anomalous coronary venous drainage. But, and by reviewing this image, we saw uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, coronary uh, venous sinus ostium is atritic, okay, in this image also. Uh, the differential diagnosis, okay, Yes. So if I may comment here, Dr. Muhammad? Yes, yes. Uh, th this has a really um, uh, significant uh, clinical implication because um, uh, in, in, a, in such a patient that you've presented with a, with a functionally single ventricle, um, probably the, uh, one of the steps for management would be to do a, a bidirectional gland shunt. And if there is a, a big connecting vein, probably the, if this vertical vein was mistaken as to be a small left SVC, probably this would have been ligated or transected. This is a, this is a really dangerous uh, thing to do uh, if this is the main uh, venous channel for the heart. So it is really important to make sure that this vertical vein is not draining the, the venous drainage of the heart. Yes. Um, the feature diagnosis of uh, uh, the, the, this left uh, uh, sided vertical vein Either systemic, as you see here, this is a persistent left severe vena This is a coronal image displaying both severe vena cava. This is the right severe vena cava and right atrium, and this is the IVC. And this one, the persistent left severe vena cava, as you see here, seen draining into the dilated coronary venous sinus, which in turn opens and drains into the uh, right atrium, as you see here. So this uh, 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 this is a persistent left severe vena cava uh, draining. Uh, in most cases, usually into the coronary sinus, which in turn in the right atrium. Uh, in some cases, with total unroofing of the coronary venous sinus, uh, the persistent left vena cava seen as if it drains into the left atrium. This, uh, this, uh, this one, the left atrium, and this one, the right atrium, the right SBC, IVC. And this is the persistent left vena cava in uh, case of total unroofing of coronary venous sinus seeing it is uh, draining into the left atrium, okay? Also, you can see if there is bridging veins between both, uh, both severe vena cava, in this case. Uh, th this one, the first differential, uh, resistant severe vena cava, 
The second differential, a vertical vein, uh, uh, which uh, drains, uh, carries or drains the pulmonary venous drainage in cases of unobstructed total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage. There is a left-sided vertical vein here, draining into the left vehicle cephalic and, to, uh, and then to the dilated SVC. Again, this is a coronal image uh, crab, uh, uh, describing the uh, pulmonary venous drainage, and this is the posterior chamber or venous confluence. Okay. The third and unusual uh, differential diagnosis, uh, if this uh, vertical vein drains the uh, coronary veins, as we mentioned. Okay. This will learn here the pressure diagnosis of vertical vein, abnormal systemic or uh, pulmonary or coronary venous drainage. Coronary sinus osteal atresia is a rare abnormality. Uh, case three, a five months uh, old infant diagnosed as supracardiac total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage, as you see here. Uh, this is a VRT image displaying the uh, uh, pulmonary veins, right pulmonary veins, and left pulmonary veins, and this is uh, the venous confluence. As you see here, this is the left-sided unobstructed vertical vein draining into the left cephalic. But the unusual finding here, as you see in this slide, the intraparenchymal course uh, of the uh, of this left uh, vertical vein, as you see here, it uh, traverses or runs into the uh, lung parenchyma and surrounded circumferentially by lung parenchyma, as you see and is not easily as accessible uh, during surgery for ligation, okay? As you see here, this is uh, a coronal image, displays a uh, lung window, displays the lung tissue, as you see here, nearly surrounded the uh, vertical vein, okay? Um, uh, Dr. Hatem, uh, what was uh, the management of this case? So, so you, um, the usual course for uh, uh, um, a vertical vein draining uh, a total anomalous pulmonary venous connection is usually in the posterior sinus, which is accessible by just opening the posterior pericardium. Uh, and then uh, what we usually do is that we open the pulmonary venous confluence and divide the vertical vein. Uh, but in, in this case, um, the vertical vein was deeply embedded inside the lung and was not um, accessible uh, from surgery. So um, one of the options would have been looking from inside the venous confluence, making sure that we have already crossed all the pulmonary venous uh, dra drain uh, veins, and then uh, close the ascending vein from inside. But that there were actually uh, some pulmonary veins draining quite high, so this was difficult. The other option would be to um, uh, uh, divide it um, high up just before it opened into the brachiocephalic, which was also um, quite inaccessible. So in this case, we elected that we open the pulmonary venous confluence into the back of the of the atrium, uh, so that we drain the pulmonary veins, and then um, uh, to be followed by percutaneous closure of this ascending vein uh, uh, percutaneously by a device with our colleagues from CAT lab. So this was done in that case. Let's see. Let's uh, learn uh, from this uh, case. Rule of CT in total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage confirms the diagnosis and describes the anatomy, exclude obstruction, uh, define level or levels of obstruction, and in this case, unusual case, describes the site and the course uh, of the pulmonary venous drainage and left-sided vertical vein, uh, as we mentioned in the, into uh, the lung brinkum, and this image also um, uh, define or show the obstruction one of the um, uh, values of the CT, obstruction of the uh, vertical vein, as you see here, these are the uh, pulmonary veins, the range into venous confluence, uh, which in turn uh, passes between the aortic arch and the ADA, shows uh, relative narrowing and obstruction. Sobracardiac total obstructed total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage, and this one, uh, venous confluence also, uh, these are the pulmonary veins, right and left drains into the posterior uh, chamber of venous confluence, which in turn drains into the IVC, shows here uh, 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 moderate to, to severe stenosis. Okay? Uh, case four, a two months old infant diagnosed as right isomerism, unbalanced AVSD, unprotected pulmonary circulation, and total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage. Uh, as you see, this is a coronal reconstructed image displaying the uh, right pulmonary veins, right superior, middle, and inferior pulmonary veins, uh, along with the left inferior pulmonary vein uh, seen draining into this venous 
circumference, which this one, this is the venous circumference in the sagittal plane. This is the corner, and this one is the sagittal. The venous circumference drains uh, 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 into the persistent left cerebellar cable and passes between the left main uh, bronchus and left pulmonary artery being compressed, and this is the first obstruction level, okay? Uh, and passes to uh, drain into the uh, uh, left-sided uh, or persistent left cerebral vena cava, this one, okay? Uh, the persistent left cerebral vena cava also uh, give the drain, draining or, or drains the uh, left cerebral pulmonary and left middle, as we mentioned, this is the right isomerism, so we, we expect here a middle loop. Uh, as we see here, uh, uh, this persistent left cerebral cava drains here in the sagittal, in the common atrium, and this one represents the uh, second level of obstruction. So we have multiple or two levels of obstruction. Obstruction here uh, after uh, this venous confluence, and another one here uh, at the entrance of the uh, persistent left cerebral cava into the cone atrium. Okay. Uh, as you see here, this is a VRT image. VRT video of Sorsini displays here. We are looking from backward. So this is the left and this is the right. Uh, this is the venous confluence, as you see, right superior, middle, inferior pulmonary veins, left inferior pulmonary vein drains in, uh, into the, this venous confluence. And uh, this venous confluence is, uh, gives uh, this short vertical vein, which being compressed between the left main bronchus and the, and the, uh, and the LBA. Okay. And this frontal view. Uh, displays the left SVC and left superior and the middle uh, pulmonary veins drains also into uh, this common atrium. And this is the second level of obstruction. Okay. Uh, Dr. Hatim, what was the, the management of this case? So uh, this patient had um, uh, a functionally single ventricle with multi-level obstruction of uh, total anomalous pulmonary venous uh, drainage. So um, uh, we tackled both uh, um, uh, each obstruction um, uh, separately. So the pulmonary venous confluence at the back of the atrium uh, was anastomosed to the to the atrial mass, to the back of the atrial mass. Uh, the vertical vein was divided, and then um, you can see in the in the image on the right uh, the SVC with the right um, upper and middle pulmonary veins were actually quite near to the left-sided uh, atrial appendage. So uh, the osseum of the SVC was uh, was transected and uh, uh, enlarged and reanastomosed to the left-sided appendage, so that um, uh, pulmonary veins now are uh, are not obstructed and the whole uh, venous drainage come back to the to the atrium. Uh, the patient had um, unprotected pulmonary circulation with a single ventricle physiology, so we also added a pulmonary artery banding for that case. So uh, let's learn it from this uh, case. Uh, total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage can be mixed. Uh, and uh, not only mixed, but you can see uh, multiple levels of obstruction. Okay? So check uh, every, uh, every vein and trace the venous confluence uh, separately or each one by one okay? to exclude uh, any associated or multiple obstructions. Uh, case number five, uh, two-year-old female diagnosed as dwarf. Uh, with subaortic BSD. Uh, she had a previous pulmonary artery banding in another hospital and was uh, referred to our center for total repair. Okay. Uh, this coronal image, uh, 2D image, post, uh, CT, post contrast CT, displays that this is the right atrium and this is the crystal terminalis, uh, uh, this is the right atrial appendage, and this is the left ventricle, as you see, hypotrophied here, by left hypotrophied. Uh, supplies both great vessel, this is the aorta. And this one, the main pulmonary artery. Okay, so we are dealing with door. And this uh, patient uh, had a pulmonary artery banding, as you see here. This is the RBT, main pulmonary artery, and this is a pulmonary, art, uh, pulmonary band leaflets. This is the main pulmonary artery, RPA, LPA, and this is the aorta. So um, we checked uh, our uh, assessment uh, during assessment of the patient, it was done. Uh, as you see here, displaying the full function of the left ventricle. And uh, CT also was done uh, uh, showing the dilated left ventricle. Okay. But uh, uh, this, uh, in this case, unexpected uh, the, uh, the left ventricle to be dilated. 
okay? And uh, um, we think about anomalous coronary uh, origin, anomalous uh, coronary origin like Alcaba, okay? Um, so that, as you see here in this case, this, uh, the first image, this a curved MPR image, uh, we found in this, uh, and we trace, uh, we trace the coronary arteries and found there is a Alcaba, anomalous left coronary artery, coronary artery from pulmonary artery, but not the usual Alcaba. This uh, uh, Alcaba originates or originated from the mid right pulmonary artery above the level of the band. Okay, as you see here, this one, the uh, 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 main pulmonary artery, this pulmonary artery uh, of valve leaflets, this is the site of the band, and this structure is, uh, was the RPA uh, giving supply to the left coronary artery. This okay, as you see here. So we are dealing we are dealing with unusual uh, alcaba where it originates from the mid RPA is as we here and this image also as you see here this is the main pulmonary artery and uh, and, uh, and this also a coronal coronal image displaying the main pulmonary artery right pulmonary artery and the abnormal origin of the uh, left coronary artery from the RPA okay uh, as you see here this is a VRT or volume render image showing the abnormal origin of the Alcaba from the mid RPA. We are uh, now uh, uh, viewing or uh, looking from the posterior. So that uh, this is the RPA here, and this one the LPA, left coronary artery. And as you see here, the left coronary artery uh, uh, rises from the RPA, supplying the LED and the LCX. LCX control here, okay. As you see in this thing, this is the RPA and this is the LED. The main LED, okay, and this one, the RCA arises from this uh, from the aorta, as you see here, okay. Unusual alcab. Um, so this was very unfortunate. Uh, the pa the patient presented uh, to another hospital, uh, and he was diagnosed as a double outlet right ventricle. The, the diagnosis of the anomalous coronary artery um, was not uh, detected back then. So uh, they decided to do pulmonary artery banding uh, as, um, as an initial treatment for the double outlet right ventricle uh, so that they would stage the repair. Uh, note that having um, high pulmonary artery pressure because of the double outlet right ventricle and the large VSD um, caused the pressure in the pulmonary artery and in turn the pressure in the left coronary to be high enough. So there were no uh, well-established collaterals between the right and the left uh, coronary systems. And then uh, because of the very unfortunate course of the uh, and site of origin from of the coronary artery, which came uh, really high up from the mid RPA, the pulmonary artery band uh, resulted of, uh, in acute pressure drop in the pulmonary artery uh, and in the coronary. So um, a massive ischemia occurred with a um, um, significant impairment of the, of the LV function. When the patient was referred as being a case with Dorf who needed total repair, um, um, uh, 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 an excellent cardiologist noticed the, the severely impaired LV function. This should not be explained by only the, the double outlet uh, ventricle and the band. Uh, that's why we suspected coronary anomalies, uh, which was detected by the excellent uh, CT image. So uh, obviously, um, uh, the, the, we, we did not um, uh, repair the, the double outlet right ventricle because we thought this left ventricle would not sustain um, systemic circulation on, on its own. So we just repaired the Alcapa uh, and left the, the pulmonary artery banding as such. Uh, the patient survived the operation, uh, was discharged of, out of hospital, and after four months, he are, um, unfortunately uh, came back in severe heart failure and uh, uh, sadly the patient died. So this is a really fatal mistake. Um, assessment of coronary arteries uh, should be an essential part of the routine evaluation of patients with congenital heart disease Yes. And uh, uh, Alcapa can arise from branch pulmonary arteries, not just from the pulmonary root. Yes, yes. Uh, case number six, a 36-year-old uh, uh, female 
uh, has a previous cell operation at eight uh, years of age. Uh, the, and uh, we diagnose, uh, then we diagnose a degenerated uh, RV uh, pulmonary to pulmonary artery condom. Okay. As you see here, this is an axial post contrast uh, CT uh, displaying uh, the main pulmonary artery, the RV, and this is the RV2 uh, pulmonary artery conduit. As you see here, we uh, we we uh, see can we can easily uh, see the calcification and the, the, the degenerative changes uh, happening in this uh, conduit, uh, and uh, the aneurysm dilatation with pressure erosion of the sternum, as you see here, uh, and uh, this conduit is very nearly uh, uh, to the outer uh, sternal table, uh, and this is uh, is the fatal uh, and not and this should be noted with the surgeon. Okay, uh, Doctor Hatton. Um, so, such a frightening image. So uh, this patient presented with a degenerated RV to be a conduit that needed the uh, resternotomy operation and changing of that conduit. But then the CT showed um, erosion of most of the sternum stopping at the outer table uh, of the sternum. So uh, obviously in such a patient, uh, uh, we went on bypass uh, uh, on the the patient was safe enough, and uh, then the, the RV to pay conduit was changed. And this is these are the post operative images. So, uh, yes, uh, redistronotomy can be uh, quite dangerous, and uh, the, the CT is very useful for that. Uh, these can, uh, these can. Uh, uh, the structures that can be injured or um, um, commonly injured are right atrial appendage, uh, right ventricle itself, uh, left lymphatic vein, uh, or the or the wood. Um, the CT is really useful for such conditions. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, case number seven: uh, a two-year-old female diagnosed as BDA with non-visualized uh, right pulmonary artery. As you see here, this is a sagittal uh, image. Uh, CT post contrast is educated, display the main pulmonary artery, the aorta, and there is and um, this is a PDA, okay, as you see here. And this axial post contrast CT displays the main pulmonary artery, left pulmonary artery, and non visualized uh, right pulmonary artery. We cannot see the uh, right uh, the RPA of right pulmonary artery, okay. As you see here, this is a 3D fully rendered image, it shows the anatomy, main pulmonary artery, left pulmonary artery, and non visualized uh, right pulmonary artery. Uh, Dr. Hatim, what was the management of this case? So, this case was uh, referred as a patient who has a PDA and was referred for, for PDA um, uh, uh, closure. But actually, uh, since the RPA was not uh, visualized at all, um, this did not mean that uh, the RPA was necessarily absent. So um, uh, with our colleagues in cath lab, they went ahead and did pulmonary vein wedge injection. So um, uh, this catheter went all the way into the right uh, pulmonary vein and injected dye there. And this showed a trace of uh, right pulmonary artery at the hilum of the right lung, uh, the, the one that Dr. Gabriel is, is uh, showing. So, uh, uh, so we decided here to um, reconstruct that right pulmonary artery and reconnect it to the main pulmonary artery, uh, obviously in addition to closing the, the PDA. This was the surgical image. So we went via sternotomy. Uh, we, f we dissected the, the right lung hilum, and actually we found the stump of the RPE uh, connected to um, uh, a closed right-sided duct ductus arteriosus, so as a ligamentum arteriosum connected to the right subclavian artery, and that was uh, totally shut off. But we found the right pulmonary artery uh, with, the, with the lumen. So uh, we took a flap from the anterior wall of the main pulmonary artery, uh, reflected that flap towards the right, connected that into the back wall of the RPE, and covered that anteriorly with a patch of pericardium. So that now the RPE course is in front of the aorta, something similar to the Lecomte uh, uh, configuration. I see. And obviously, the, the PDA. 
So yes. these are post-operative images. Yes, this is a post-operative images, uh, volume gender and the reconstructed axial and the, and the sagittal oblique. And you see here, this is the RPA uh, from its origin. And no osseous noses, no, no centric segments, till it's uh, are un, uh, branching and arborization patterns. There is the arborization pattern of, the, of this RPA. Okay. This will narrate here, non-visualized branch pulmonary artery does not mean it's absent. Pulmonary vein, which injection is a useful tool in this scenario? Okay, case number uh, eight. Uh, query uh, aortic dissection. Okay, uh, this uh, this image, a sagittal uh, view, as you see here. This is the aorta. Okay, and this is a presumed or assumed uh, uh, dissecting frame. Okay. And this is the arch branches, the cephalic, carotid, and subclavian. But we reconstruct a volume rendered scene uh, uh, like this. And this displays the resistant fifth uh, aortic arch. The, no dissecting flap. Okay. As you see here, no dissecting flap, just the resistant fifth. Aortic arch. The presumed or assumed dissecting flap, uh, we take a longitudinal or perpendicular uh, cut here. Uh, this one, the sagittal, okay, as you see here, uh, displays the round vascular structure below the aortic arch. This one corresponds to this vascular structure, which is the resistant fifth aortic arch. So we have, so we have all, also uh, similar cases. Uh, uh, as you see here, this is a coronal image displaying uh, a, an end on of the aortic arch, this one, and the uh, resistant fifth aortic arch, okay, and this is not a flap, not a dissecting flap, okay, also in, in this case, this is not a dissecting flap, and uh, volume rendered images, uh, as you see here, this image and this one, add a lot in, uh, in this uh, Entity and show this and this just a resistant fifth aortic arch. A resistant fifth aortic arch. Okay. This similarity, resistant fifth aortic arch is a rare arch anomaly that can mimic aortic dissection, but it's not a uh, dissection uh, or dissecting the flow. The last case, okay, a two year uh, old child diagnosed at the trial of Fallou, as you see here. Uh, the most uh, important uh, uh, finding in this case, the, uh, let's uh, first review the anatomy. This is the main pulmonary artery, and this one, the RQT, and this is the aorta, here anterior, the sternum, RBLPA. Uh, this uh, single coronary artery supplies the RCA and the left main artery or left coronary artery. The left coronary artery has a pre RQT course so that uh, it, it's, it's a crucial point to, uh, to be mentioned and to be notified. Uh, the pre pulmonic or pre RVT course of the uh, major uh, coronary artery, like the left main artery, and like and this is this image displayed well. This is the aorta, the uh, single coronary artery, the RCA here, and this one, the left coronary artery supplying the LCX and the LED. Uh, the left coronary artery has a pre RVT course, as you see here. This is the RVT, and this chamber is the RV, LV, left atrium, and this one, right atrium. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Hatim, uh, uh, what was the management, or uh, what's your opinion regarding this uh, finding? So, a major coronary artery crossing the RVOT is, uh, is not rare in uh, patients with the trilogy of fallow. Uh, and this does have a significant clinical implication. It does affect uh, the timing for surgery, but also the, the surgical procedure itself. Uh, if, it is, uh, it if it were um, a tiny uh, RV branch crossing the conus, this is, this is not unusual, uh, can be sacrificed. But if it is a major coronary artery, either the left main LED or sometimes the right coronary uh, crossing there, this can, cannot be divided. So uh, there are multiple options here. If the uh, if the whole procedure can be done transatrially with resection from inside, this can be an option. 
Uh, other options would be putting RV to PE conduits. Uh, uh, even a third option is doing a double barrel technique, so uh, doing a trans atrial section as much as possible, and then doing another uh, end to side uh, tube from the RV in, end to side into the MPE, so that patients will have uh, two pathways, one from the native RVOT through the pulmonary valve, and another one uh, bridging over this coronary so that the RV pressure after the operation would be uh, would not be high. So different options. There are other options, but these are one. Uh, these are the, the major ones. The most important thing is that we identify that uh, preoperatively, so that we plan uh, timing uh, for the operation and what what to do. Yes, um, and uh, the uh, coronary artery or the major coronary artery, not only the left main artery, but uh, in similar cases, uh, as in this one, uh, shows a dual LED. Okay. The left main supplies a short LED and uh, uh, the LCX, and the RCA, as you see here, supplies uh, the second uh, anomalous or long uh, LED that reaches the apex here. And this long uh, LED uh, has a pre RVOT course, as you see here, and, and, and as you see here uh, in this exit image, this is the main palm, uh, the MPA or main palm artery, RPA, LPA, and this is the RVOT. And this is the RCE, and this 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 structure is the anomalous second uh, long LED that reaches the apex with uh, chose the RPT course, and also a third variation, the RCA. Okay, uh, in this uh, image, a 3D image, the RCA uh, arises anomalously from the mid LED and shows a pre-RVT course, as you see here, this uh, in this uh, slide, and uh, in the axial, as you see here, this is the RVT. And this is the left coronary artery, Leomas and LCX. And the uh, anomalous RCA arises from the mid LED and passes in front of the uh, RVT. Uh, lesson learned here in this case uh, CT is, use, is useful for defining coronary anatomy in the fragile fellow. Also, it answers uh, the uh, other three questions, major questions the pulmonary arterial tree. Uh, and it displays the branching pattern of the pulmonary arteries and excludes uh, central and the peripheral pulmonary artery stenosis. Uh, it uh, uh, displays the aorto pulmonary collaterals, the uh, number, their number, their site and origin, their terminations. Uh, also, it uh, can uh, show the additional muscular BSDs that can be missed by echo. Okay. So uh, this is uh, the, uh, the lesson learned from this case. And I will summarize uh, the key, point, key points from uh, the, uh, the cases before. Uh, coronary, coronary anomalies in Trancus arteriosus should be looked uh, uh, and it's not that rare. Differential diagnosis of the vertical vein, as we mentioned, uh, systemic coronary and, uh, and pulmonary uh, veins, venous drainage. Uh, the intraoricumal and odd or unusual course of the uh, vertical vein in total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage and multi-level obstruction in uh, total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage. Okay. The alcaba uh, can arise from branch pulmonary artery, not only from the main pulmonary artery. Uh, the RV uh, pulmonary artery conduits uh, can erode the sternum, okay. and uh, we, sh we should uh, notify this uh, finding with the surgeon. Uh, Non-visualized pulmonary artery branch does not mean its absence, okay? Uh, so we, we uh, uh, wedge pressure, uh, wedge injection, uh, wedge injection uh, should be done, a venous injection in the pulmonary veins to, de to delineate the non-visualized pulmonary artery, okay? Persistent fifth aortic arch can mimic aortic dissection and the coronary artery assessment at fragile fellow is very important, uh, especially if there is a main uh, coronary artery with pre rpt course. Acknowledgement, uh, Dr. Hadi. We would like to thank, um, uh, um, uh, would like to thank the Conjunta um, Heart Academy for, for inviting us here. Um, these cases uh, uh, were only possible, the management and uh, the diagnosis and management of these cases were only possible uh, because of the large effort and uh, significant contribution of the whole Aswan uh, Heart Center team. Uh, would like to thank you all and uh, thank you from, from Aswan.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Atem. Thank you, Mohammed. I think that uh, you present such uh, incredible and, uh, you know, it's very important to share this, this case because, again, there is a different point of view and uh, sometimes we consider something uh, already, it means we don't consider that uh, also a uh, left superior vena cava can be something different or can make a big trouble in the management of very complex case. So thank you very much. I, I have, uh, before we go to the qu question and answer, if uh, Mohammed, if you can stop share your screen, I will see you, please. Um, stop, yes. Okay, thank you very much. I have uh, the first question I did uh, to Atem before the, the, we start the, the live. The question is how you make uh, a decision uh, in a patient uh, who is doing uh, cat lab, who is doing uh, MRI, who is doing CT scan, who is taking care, and after the full diagnosis, do you have some hard team meeting where the decision is shared with surgeon? Anesthesia? Tell me if you can explain this point. We are very interested in this. So um, uh, what we're, we're doing here in our center is that we have a weekly meeting. Um, uh, this includes uh, uh, cardiologists, cardiac surgeons, adult heart disease, and other for congenital heart disease. And based on that, um, we uh, review all the clinical data, the imaging, um, all the imaging, um, um, X-ray, ECG, echo, uh, cath, um, cath lab, uh, I mean, catheter, uh, CT, MRI. And based on that, we decide on uh, uh, what to do for what, uh, which patients. Uh, many patients actually do require uh, um, uh, combined interventions, so either diagnostic or therapeutic from surgeons, cath lab, or, or our cath team. Uh, some of these actually are done hybrid together. So last week we had a, um, our colleague doing um, dilatation of a stent inside the OR. So th these things uh, can only be done with the team contribution. So this is how we, we do things here. We've learned a lot from each other uh, and sh sharing experience. So this is what, we, what we're doing here. And you have a, a fantastic teacher like uh, Professor Jakub. Of course, that of course. everybody is learning a massive amount of knowledge it from him. A, a very amazing person. Again, Mohamed, I have a question uh, for you. It means uh, if you want, you give us uh, 10 commandments for the total anomalous, for the double aortic arch. How you in which case you think uh, uh, you suggest a CT scan uh, like uh, isomerism, like uh, transposition? It means uh, is a CT scan dedicated only to complex case or we have to rethink to this? Uh, I think uh, CT scan uh, uh, is uh, far superior uh, in uh, showing the anatomy. The anatomical details of uh, uh, and uh, uh, congenital heart disease, uh, and we uh, use uh, uh, retrospective milli, uh, retrospective ECG gating with millar beer modulation to reduce uh, the total amount of radiation uh, to the child or to, uh, to the infant. Okay, uh, uh, and uh, uh, CT uh, not indicated in all congenital heart disease, but in certain uh, entities. Uh, uh, in each disease uh, or some disease, uh, it will answer uh, the most important questions. As we mentioned, the fellow, the muscular VSDs, the MAPCAS, the pulmonary artery anatomy, the pre RBT course, if there is pre RBT course of the, of the coronary arteries, and uh, the old or unusual course of uh, anomalous pulmonary venous drainage. So, uh, and in arch anomalous abnormalities, mediastinal vascular structures. So CT is uh, important, but uh, it should uh, uh, just be justified, not in all cases, not in simple cases like ASD, VSD, PDA even, uh, can, can, uh, can be diagnosed and managed uh, easily. Okay? No uh, need for uh, irradiation of the patient. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned, the CT uh, is uh, 
show has the big or great role in anatomy. Uh, 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 an MRI, a post-operative assessment of ventricular volumes and functions, uh, and if there is shunting lesion, okay? Uh, as we mentioned, CT, not in, not in all cases, but in certain uh, complex uh, and, uh, and the co complex congenital heart diseases, and he, it will uh, answer uh, the uh, clinical questions in these cases. If I may summarize here, um, exactly what like Muhammad said, uh, probably any extra cardiac vascular structure is better uh, delineated um, anatomically with the CT. So echo can give really good images for intracardiac anatomy, um, and shunts and flow and uh, ventricular volumes and functions. Uh, uh, but um, if, if the question is coronary arteries, coronary veins, pulmonary arteries, pulmonary veins, or systemic arteries or veins, then the CT is really uh, superior here. Thank you very much. So there is uh, for uh, both uh, some question uh, in uh, question and answer. Or Elio, you want to say something? Elio Caruso. Yes, yes. Um, so I'm, I'm a pediatric cardiologist. So I think for the, um, the complex congenital disease, um, for me, it's very important to, to do CT scan. Uh, because the, in this era, in this period, uh, echo is the first line, uh, but uh, the gold standard for comple uh, complex anatomy uh, congenital disease for me is a MRI or CT scan for 3D re reconstruction of the anatomy, the complex anatomy. For me, for surgeon, is very important for, for the patient, for surgeon. This is my idea. Adam. Adam, you want to say something? Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm great. I do, uh, oh. I do agree. There is a, I think that probably we can concentrate the question and uh, someone like uh, is asking a very technical, uh, Fanny Papadopoulou is asking something um, from a uh, surgical point of view. And this a uh, compliments for your presentation. And he asked, why in the case seven was not selected a repair of the right pulmonary artery in orthotopic manner, so to avoid the later stenosis after the reconstruction anterior of the aorta? So we did, uh, we did think about that. Uh, uh, the, the MPA was very dilated because of the, the effect of most of the, I mean, the whole cardiac output from the right ventricle was going only into the MPA to the left pulmonary artery, but also because of the significant uh, patent ductus arteriosus. And this MPA was very dilated anteriorly. So the MPA was significantly anterior to the aorta. And so we, we thought if, uh, if we put it posterior to the aorta, it would be uh, uh, kinked. So, uh, so we felt that it was technically more easier to, uh, to do it um, in front, but um, I agree it, it could have been done uh, from the back if the anatomy allowed. Yes. No, for the other part of the question, I think that Fanny was not keep attention. The patient of the number five case was not operated in a Swan Art Center. Was only referred to them, and I'm yes. sure the diagnosis was done when the patient they did the echo and the suspicion of uh, ischemia. No, the question yes. was uh, when uh, with the Alcapa after bending, but was not in your hospital, so you only received the case after. No. Yes. Yes. That's exactly what happened. Uh, I have another question for Mohamed. Mohamed, how long do you take for a CT scan with uh, contrast? How long? In minutes? Is 20? Is 30 minutes? Is one hour? Is not? I don't know. CT scan is very fast uh, imaging tool. Uh, the, uh, the, the whole time of the scan or the acquisition not exceeding two or three minutes. In, uh, in any child or in any position, three minutes maximum. And then for MRI? Uh, MRI, uh, uh, it's, it's longer, uh, uh, especially if we uh, make uh, con basic congenital uh, protocols, uh, more tennis, more use. Uh, as you see, uh, it may exceed one hour. Yes, the other question is, do you, do you use CT scan or MRI in neonates? Because there is some question about small babies. According to the question, if the question regarding uh, the coronaries, so we'll, uh, we'll use uh, a CT. 
Uh, if the question uh, uh, just assessing the ventricular volumes and functions, if there is chance, uh, MRI is far superior. Yes. Uh, yes, if the question is, can you do that in unit? Yes, we do that in unit also. Yes. And uh, our colleague here uh, pr produce really good images, even in units. Yes, I, I agree. We use also. The question is, do you use uh, some uh, medical therapy to reduce the heart rate during the procedure? No, no, no. Uh, heart rate only in adults. We reduce the heart rate uh, only in adults with chron uh, coronary CT. But uh, uh, neonates, infants, uh, we, we, we don't need uh, to reduce the heart rate. Okay. okay. Thank yes. you very much. So there is uh, uh, some other question, but of course, you, after we close, you can uh, still answer, uh, you can write directly to them. The question is, uh, do you have some uh, uh, way out to uh, distinguish in isomerism, which is dominant ventricle, which is not dominant when it's unbalanced? There is some, what you use as a tool for Mohammed. To yes. the, say there is a, a balanced ventricle or is a, which is dominant. The volume, uh, the ejection fraction. Uh, regarding CT or uh, MRI? CT. CT. Yes. Uh, uh, as you see here, uh, uh, CT, uh, as, uh, as we mentioned, it's displayed the anatomy very well. You can see the dimensions of the ventricles. Uh, well, uh, the diastolic filling, the, uh, uh, and you you can see the alignment of the septum, uh, in uh, whether it's interinterior or interventricular septum. Uh, CT uh, can easily uh, answer uh, the all questions uh, regarding the anatomy. Yeah, that's very good. And so the the is, uh, yes. if the question is the uh, diagnosis of isomerism itself, probably the CT is good because um, uh, it is very well correlate, cor uh, correlated with the bronchial anatomy. And this is actually very well seen with CT. So um, on CT, you can see the, the, bron uh, the bronchial anatomy. And uh, this, uh, if it is right uh, bronchial uh, anatomy on both sides, this is usually a right isomerism. Also, obviously, detecting the spleen and other uh, 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 abdominal uh, viscera. But uh, questioning the, the ventricular dominance and balance, most of the time, we do that by echo. If it is very borderline, uh, then we resort to MRI and try to detect volumes there. Uh, I, I, we share the same idea. So I fully agree with you. I think that this is the, the way how to make the roadmap for uh, isomeris. But the question probably was uh, if, uh, as you, but you answer, I'm sure the MRI probably is better than uh, CT scan. Uh, for the evaluation of the balance and if the ventricle, uh, if these can be separated or not. Yes. So the last, we have a lot of questions also in chat, but I want to ask the, probably in uh, double aortic arch, which I saw for the first time what you show us, and uh, that's thanks. This is an amazing view. The fifth, uh, the permanence of the fifth arch is uh, amazing. But the question is, if you have suspicion of double aortic arch, you will lose a CT scan or you go for MRI? Uh, I think uh, the CT scan, CT scan, yes. Yeah. Uh, scan. I agree, the CT would show the anatomy of the arch very well, but also the, the compression of the bronchi and, uh, and the tracheal bronchial tree, this would be very well seen by CT. Yes, no, as uh, Dr. Caruso said, uh, we are shifting a lot uh, to moving uh, in terms